This is Boomer Life on CIL 650. Welcome back to Boomer Life. Sterling Fox with George Abacan, president of Abacan and Associates, trustees in bankruptcy, and our trusty producer, Dwayne Bishop, with some money music in the background as we talk about, well, uh, solutions to debt problems. George's company, Abacan and Associates, are specialists in debt settlement and debt restructuring, as well, of course, of being uh, trustees in bankruptcy. George, when people come to you to see you and your colleagues at your offices, five of them around the province, or whether you jump in the car and end up going to their place by the time they've picked up the phone and arranged for a rendezvous with a trustee in bankruptcy their life has probably become pretty no fun they've been receiving uh letters and phone calls uh they get uh, they're being hounded the wolf is literally at the door um there may be a garnishment underway everybody is on their case and everybody is angry so well, I've, I've hit the wall, and I guess i got to go bankrupt. <laughs> Time to call a trustee. This is where we began the conversation. And in many cases, that person is a bit surprised when they have that first free consultation with you. Absolutely. Um, the, um, the situation, if we, do, if we can do a proposal with them or bankruptcy, uh, and they're under a garnishment, uh, or they have a judgment that's going forward through the courts, etc., and they're getting harassing phone calls, we can stop that uh, as soon as we file a debt restructuring proposal uh, and or bankruptcy. We, as I say, we prefer to do uh, the proposals. Uh, we feel it's better for the people sure, and um, allows them to feel better with themselves because at least they offered something to the creditors. Do the creditors and those collection, those loud, rude collection agencies, uh, do they make a distinction between a consumer proposal and a bankruptcy? Or once the client comes under the uh, auspices of Abacan and Associates, does the wolf at the door, uh, it, it, are they just sort of forced to go away? Well, they're not forced to go away, but as soon as uh, the reports I get from the debtors, the uh, people that deal with us or talk to us, is that as soon as, and this is what I tell the debtor, is that you tell the uh, uh, creditor that's phoning you, the collection agent that's phoning you, that you're dealing with Abacan and Associates, and uh, they will stop um, harassing you. Immediately, they will change the tenor of... Um, of the voice, uh, the harassing side becomes way more gentle. Uh, they say, okay, uh, who is it at Avacans that you're dealing with? Or um, uh, when will I get the paperwork? Uh, and generally, I, I tell the debtor that uh, at the stage that we're at, it'll be another five days before they actually get the paperwork. Mm -hmm. And those calls all stop. We also immediately get the information necessary if there's a garnishment and uh, notify yeah, Revenue Canada, if that's the if that's the person that's garnishing, but that may not necessarily be the case. There may be other people. So you can stop a garnishee? We stop a garnishee right in its tracks. Interesting. Yeah. So, um, so, so within uh, the course of, of an initial interview, when you decide this person's case has merit and you're going to assist them, uh, the you can you can pretty much shut down that that awful stuff in what what a couple of weeks George a couple uh, of days well it depends how fast we can get the information if the uh, person has uh, is able to submit the information we can probably do it within a two day period mm. um, and um, and in certain instances uh, if it's a larger bankruptcy or proposal uh, we can do it in even less than two days but. Uh, that requires other information that we have to have. Well, imagine the enormous relief already just to have that really awful element of your life eliminated. You haven't still solved much, but you've got the yelling stopped. Well, and suddenly, that, suddenly also, and you can think again. Yeah, you've also got uh, generally a garnishee is with 33% of uh, whatever income that the guy is uh, getting, right. what the debtor is getting. Uh, that uh, 33% uh, could be a significant amount that's enough to pay uh, the rent, etc. If we can get the paperwork done and filed, then we can notify the, uh, the uh, payroll payee, uh, payer, 
uh, that the garnishee is lifted, and they won't and they won't uh, take that 33 percent. Interesting stuff. And, so, and, when when uh, a person uh, comes to you. And you accept the case and you decide, okay, now, because you said you ask a few basic questions. You're a pro. You've been at this a very long time. How much do you make? How much do you owe? A few, you can evaluate, generally speaking, a case in a half an hour or less. And and, and based on that simple analysis, you can decide whether this case has merit and whether you should accept it or not, right? Absolutely. And uh, within that same time frame, we can decide whether probably decide um, uh, whether the uh, whether it should be a debt restructuring proposal or bankruptcy okay uh, you have to um, we also have to ascertain whether there's joint debt between the husband and wife in which case we have to maybe file a joint proposal because otherwise if you file a proposal for the principal debtor and the wife had uh, use of the credit cards then she would be liable as well so yeah, so if you do one, then the uh, credit card companies, etc., go after the creditors go after the wife. Is that so? Typically, then, in a in a husband wife scenario, are is it usually ending up as a joint proposal? Then, George, in many cases, in okay. many cases, there can be a joint proposal. Also, you can have uh, corporations. Uh, we we do situations where we have a corporation. Let's say it's a landscaping um, a company. It has it's a run by a husband and wife situation, mm-hmm. and uh, the debt, the, there's mutuality of debt between the landscaping corporation and the company. Uh, uh, the landscape landscaping corporation can't um, get any debt, uh, get, get any credit without having a personal guarantee. So the debt is all mutual. So we do a proposal for all three. Okay, and. Um, and invariably, they're accepted. You talked earlier about whether it's either in the context of a proposal or a bankruptcy, one of the activities of a trustee is to organize the debts and then approach the creditors, each of these individual companies or or agencies or whatever that is owed money by this person. Then you approach each of those companies to see whether they'll accept this remedy uh, and, and make things ready. Do you do all that work, or is there a place in, in the process where the person who owes the dough has to make an appearance or any of that kind of stuff? No. In the, in the uh, summary-type organizations, the uh, smaller operations that we have, the smaller debts restructuring, um, what happens there is that we compile the information we have to make sure the data has uh, has offered everything, all the creditors, and then we make a package and we deliver it simultaneously to all creditors. Okay. At that point, they've got 45 days to to um, decide. Invariably, they decide within the first uh, three weeks. So three weeks down the road, we generally know whether the proposal is going to be accepted because they need 50% plus one dollar of whatever the dollar of whatever the total amount is, but it, they have to be voting. Okay. Now, for instance, we know one bank will file a proof of claim but never vote. So if that particular bank has $20,000 out of 50, then we're dealing with 30000 Okay. And uh, so, as I say, within, um, within three weeks, we generally know um, which, what the status is going to be. And we can advise the creditor. And if it looks like it's going to fail, what we do is we um, go to the creditor that's objecting and say, okay, the guy's, if the guy goes bankrupt, this is what you're going to get, zero or close to zero. And this is when they're looking at 22, 23 cents. What will you accept? And if they say uh, 25, another $25 a month or $50 a month, then we go back to the debtor and say, okay, you can have a successful proposal but it's but going to cost is, you a little bit more. It's going to cost you a little bit more. Right. And if he says yes, then the proposal goes through. Right. And if they if they're just if that's the tipping point and they can't afford that extra 25 bucks a month and it seems silly, but I'm sure that a lot of people hit the, they're already maxed out by the time mm-hmm. they sit down across from you. So, what happens if they can't go that extra distance okay, to what, satisfy that that particular creditor? What happens Then they is, go bankrupt? Well, they can uh, or uh, what we have to do is issue basically that it's a, a non-compliant proposal. It doesn't succeed, and the 
the protection that the creditor has disappears. Ah, okay. So now the creditors, um, uh, sorry, the debtor has. Now the creditors can go back after the uh, uh, after the debtor, and at that point he has a choice. He can go bankrupt, or he can file another proposal. But he has to wait six months before he can do that. Ah. So. Um, so really, the time to make that adjustment is during the, um, that 45-day period. What happens to your credit record, George? And, and give me both instances, please, uh, when a person files. I mean, your, your credit record is already, of course, completely shot. If, you, if you're in debt and sitting across the desk from a trustee, chances are there's not much left to it. But what's going to happen when you, if you, go, if you file a proposal versus if you go bankrupt to your credit record? Well, in both cases, uh, it'll be uh, listed as being, in the one case, bankrupt, and in the other one, as making a, a settlement. Sometimes the, um, uh, the creditor makes a mistake and lists the proposal as being a bankruptcy, which can you know, be a real problem for the debtor. Trying to get it undone is, is uh, very... So you you try to make sure that the uh, and you you know it's really at the behest of the creditors as to how they give the information to the credit uh, bureaus. The bureau, sure. Um, but both of them are bad. Um, I I view that the proposal is is way better. Um, you can also reestablish your credit probably easier. You don't have. On a, on a bankruptcy, you have to file income and expense statements every month. Uh, you have to, if you get over a certain amount, uh, depending on what your take-home pay is, then you can be extended for 21 months. Um, and if it's a second-time bankruptcy, then it can be uh, extended even further. So um, uh, in a proposal, for instance, we would advocate that somebody... Um, get a prepaid credit card from uh, a financial institution that they're dealing with, preferably not one of the financial institutions that they... That, that, that is they, angry at them, <laughs> right, that they, yeah. That they wrote off. And uh, with that prepaid credit card, um, because now, remember, if they were paying, say, $2,000 a month on credit cards, now we got them down to, say, $500 or $400. Um, the... Um, uh, they're saving all that money that they otherwise would have been paying, and maybe they can establish a prepaid credit card, put in $500 or $1,000, and after a few months, maybe six months, uh, they could probably get a small line of credit on a, on a credit Based card. Based on a successful model of months and months of, of paying the, the yeah. balance in full. Absolutely, right. Okay. I want, I'm glad you uh, sort of opened that door to reestablishing credit because uh, the, the whole p point of the program here, as we uh, stated right from the outset, George, is talking about solutions to debt problems and the fact that we hope to be able to give our listeners a reason to believe that there is hope and freedom after this horrible indebted situation that is causing so much strife in so many lives these days and restructuring uh, and re activating one's credit is certainly an indicator of a revival and a re-entry into the community, isn't it? Well, we definitely regard it as not being a punishment process, but a rehabilitative process. It's, um, in other words, we're not trying to punish people, right? but we're trying to rehabilitate them and have them understand credits on an ongoing basis. Our guest is George Abacan, the president of Abacan and Associates, trustees in bankruptcy, specialists in debt settlement and debt restructuring, and online at abacan.com. Abacan, it's spelled A-B-A-K-H-A-N.com. Back with more on Boomer Life in a couple of minutes. Celebrating the baby boomer lifestyle, this is Boomer Life on CL 650.